Hey friends, welcome back to the Stay at Home Artist channel. Today I'm going to do a quick crash course about Procreate. So if you're new to this, then this is the video for you. So the first and most important thing is figure out what canvas size you like. The higher pixels you have, the better resolution it's going to be, but you won't be allowed to use as many layers. So I like to use 3000 by 3000 pixels. So that's what I'm going to use for this design that I'm working on here. Second most important thing is learning how to use brushes so you can download my free brushes i've linked them in the description here i use two different ones typically a streamline and a free form brush so when i use the streamline brush it's when i want my shapes to be more rounded more perfected the free form brush i really just use for like doing my handwriting or if I don't want any stabilization in my pen because as you can see it's really annoying to write when it feels like there's a magnet attached to your brush but it is very helpful at the same time and at any time you want to erase something you can tap two fingers on the screen and it'll undo the last thing you did. So if you want to play around with the stabilization of your brush, you can always do that by going to the settings here. Here's about what I like to do. You can add more or less to fit your preferences. Next, it's super helpful to know how to make a perfect shape and procreate. So anytime you're doing just a basic shape like a circle, you can just hold it at the end and then it will automatically perfect the shape for you. And then once it's formed, you can move it around, make it smaller or larger, whatever you'd like to do. And if you'd like to fill your shape, you can just drag the color from the color drop tool and bring it over to your shape. And you can do this with any closed shape in Procreate. All you have to do is make sure that the lines are connecting at some point. And if you're filling in multiple shapes, here's the color drop tool you can use. You just have to activate it and then you only have to tap each object you're filling in. Next, let's go over a little bit of layers and how to use them. So I've got a cloud on one layer here and I'm going to add a new layer and draw another cloud. And these are so rough. I know <laughs> I'm just <laughs> using them as an example, just so you can see what I'm doing here. So having them on two different layers allows you to manipulate each shape individually. And if you press the select tool, you can move it around in the uniform feature. I'm just going to move it behind this cloud to hide the weird spot on <laughs> the darker one. And then if you want to combine layers, you can just pinch them together like that. In that way, they'll move together in a cohesive manner. Now let's say if you want to like do something different to your shape, there's a lot of different features in the select tool that you can use. So there's freeform, which allows you to make it taller or more oblong. And then that uniform feature that we've been using, there's a distort feature and a warp feature. All of these can be really helpful depending on what you're using Procreate for. I mostly use the warp tool just to like perfect my shapes a little bit more or move them more in the direction I want them to be. And then once you're done, just go back to the uniform button on the select tool so you can move around your shape. Now, if you go to the wrench tool over in the top left corner, you can select insert a photo. And this can be helpful if you want to trace on top of a photo or add something to your photos. I love to use Procreate to add a watermark to my photos if I'm adding them to Instagram or social media. So I'm just going to insert a file and I have my logo uploaded and it'll automatically boot that onto a new layer and then I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit so you can still see the photo underneath. Now if you want to add text to Procreate there's a lot of fun things you can do with that. You just press the tool button and the add text text and Procreate comes with already generated fonts in there. Um, I do have another tutorial on how to upload your own fonts to Procreate coming soon. So I'm just going to play around with the text that I have here. If you want to change the colors, you can just select it like this and go to your color palette.
Now using the select tool will allow you to enlarge the text and let's say you want to edit the image of the text in some way. So I'm going to click the rasterize button, then I'll click alpha lock and this will only fill in the text and not the rest of the layer. Because normally if you press the fill layer button on a new layer, it would just fill the entire page. And a helpful thing to know for the color palette tool, you can double click the white and black areas to get a solid white or black color. Now, if you want to edit the image of the text like I'm doing here, it doesn't have to be on alpha lock. You do just have to rasterize the text. So that's what I've done. If you do have it on alpha lock though, and you want to draw over it, then you won't have to worry about it going off the text. Anyway, I'm going to add some fresh text in here just so I can show you something else. Something I love to use these script fonts for is tracing over them. I don't really love my own script handwriting, so this is a really helpful way to have a little guide. So all you need to do is reduce the opacity of the text layer. I'll go down to about 20 or 30 percent. Then I'm going to add another layer on top and for this I like to use the streamline brush just so it'll round out all the edges for me. I'm going to reduce the size of the brush down just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing easier and trace over top the text layer. And this is fun because you can kind of manipulate the text and make it your own. Once you have your top layer, you can either delete or turn off that bottom layer of text and now you have your own text. Duplicating a layer is really simple and very helpful if you're making a design with a similar pattern across. So here's how you do that. Then you can just use the select tool to move it over. I don't have a ton of experience with using brushes in Procreate, so I can't give you a ton of guidance on that, but I do like to use some textured brushes when I'm doing my bouquet mock-up, so I'll show you how to do that. I like to use the snow gum brush, the sword grass brush in Procreate, and those just add some cool texture on some of those things in bouquets that are just really annoying to draw. And I forgot to add this to the beginning, but over on the left hand side, those little levers, you can move up and down to either reduce or to play with the opacity of whatever brush you're using and to play with the size. The other brush I love to use is the Procreate pencil, just because it does feel like a normal pencil. And sometimes I'll do this if I'm just brainstorming or I want to make some notes on a design so I don't forget when I'm transferring it to my embroidery pattern. And don't forget you can play with the stabilization of any brush you're using. If you add an image and you want to rotate it, here's how you do that. You can just grab the select tool and grab that little green dot at the top and you can move your photo around. And that's all for today. I know this is super quick. Hopefully it'll get you started on your journey.